My name is Amanda Curtis and this is my seminar project on iPads and iPods in the classroom. There are a few areas that we need to discuss in regards to using the iPods or iPads in the classroom. First, we need to talk about ways that we can use these devices in the classroom. Next, we need to discuss rules for using these devices. There are literally thousands of different apps that can be used in the classroom to boost reading skills. These apps range from focusing on vocabulary to fluency, character and plot development, and comprehension. Apps such as these are not only a fun but effective learning tool for reading. Some of the ways that we can use iPads and iPods in the classroom for especially reading and writing are by using them for reading ebooks um, or listening to podcast stories. Um, we can also use them to publish student works. Um, students can learn to use these devices to take notes on. We can use them to have students do research projects. Um, to make their presentations and present them to the class. We can also introduce blogging to students on iPads. We can use games um, that are specifically designed for reading and writing. We can publish newspapers for our classrooms or we can do poems. Many of the apps that help to bolster writing skills also tie in with reading skills. These apps help students to work on spelling and punctuation, sentence structure, creativity, and even help students to develop character and plots.
Many of the most popular math apps for iPods and iPads in the classroom focus on memory, patterns, basic math concepts, problem solving and word problem skills, fractions, and working with money. Areas that are addressed in science apps are basic scientific concepts, engineering, molecular science, biology, anatomy, and astronomy. There are even apps to help students with art and music. Some of these offer practice with instruments, photography and editing, drawing and painting, and even computer animation. Lastly, students can use these apps to help enhance their public speaking skills. They can not only learn how to create presentations with the help of these apps, but also how to present them. Of course, when you're adding equipment in the classroom, there must be rules or do's and don'ts for students to abide by. Teachers may consider making a usage contract for students to enter into. There should be consequences also for breaking the rules mentioned in the contract. Students should be taught how to properly care for the devices and do simple maintenance on them, such as cleaning and battery replacement. This concludes my presentation and thank you for joining me and I hope that the information provided was helpful.